Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 42 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you the chi-square distribution. I discussed the main properties of the distribution and then its role in statistical inference. You will recall that the chi-square distribution plays an important role in estimation and hypothesis testing regarding the population variance sigma square. In today's lecture, I will be talking about the F distribution and statistical inference about two population variances on the basis of the F distribution. But before I proceed with that, let us consolidate what we did last time with the help of an example. As you now see on the slide, the manager of a bottling plant is anxious to reduce the variability in the net weight of fruit bottled. Over a long period, the standard deviation has been 15.2 gram. A new machine is introduced and the net weights in grams in 10 randomly selected bottles, all of the same nominal weight, are 987, 966, 955, and so on, grams. Would you report to the manager that the new machine has a better performance? Aye, pehle is problem ko understand karne ki koshish karte hain. Ye jo fruit hai, that is being bottled. Aur khahish ye hoti hai ke jo specifications hain, uske mutabik hi ho, na usse zyada, na usse kam. Lekin aap jitni bhi koshish kar lehen, um, kuch na kuch variability zarur hoti hai. But, of course, you would like that the variability should be minimal. To is mein hum yehi test karna cha rahe hain, ke ab jo new machine introduced hui hai, kya uski wajah se variability jo hai, not the mean students, the variability, the wo jo variation hai from bottle to bottle, has that variation reduced? So, how do we proceed with this um, test? As you see, on the screen, step one is the null and the alternative hypothesis. H naught, sigma is equal to 15.2 gram. That is, the standard deviation is still the same as before. And H1, that sigma is less than 15.2 gram. In other words, the standard deviation has reduced. Step two is the level of significance, and we may set it as 5%. Step 3 is the test statistic and students, you will recall from the last lecture that n s square over sigma square or in other words summation x minus x bar whole square over sigma square, this quantity follows the chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Since we always begin by assuming that H naught is true. Therefore, we can write N S square over sigma naught square, where sigma naught square is the value of sigma square that we hypothesize under H naught. The next step is the calculation. And in this problem, the sample size is 10. Sum X comes out to be 9713. And sigma x square is equal to 9435347. Now, n s square is equal to sigma x square minus sigma x whole square over n, according to the shortcut formula. And substituting the values, n s square comes out to be 1110.1. Hence, n s square over sigma naught square, which can be called chi square, our test statistic. This comes out to be equal to 4.81. All right, char step to mukammal ho gaye, aur paanchwa step hai critical region. And students, in this particular problem, what is the alternative? That sigma square is less than 
what we hypothesized according to the null hypothesis. Ye less than ka jo sign hai, uski wajah se, I hope you will all agree that the entire 5% area should be to the left side and therefore, when we look at the chi-square table, we look under 0.95. Kyunke agar left side pe 5% area chahiye, to iska matlab hai ke us point ke right side pe 95% area chahiye. Or jaisa ke maine last time kaha tha, chi-square table jo hai na, us mein aapko jo areas milenge, wo, wo hai jo us point ke right pe hoon. So, as you now see on the screen, the critical value is chi-square 0.95 at 9 degrees of freedom and this comes out to be 3.32. So, as I am saying that the left side of the tail is the critical region because our alternative hypothesis is less than sign. But you will recall from the last lecture that the chi-square distribution starts from 0 and goes up to infinity. So, this means that this is our critical value i, 3.32, its left side pe jo area is not minus infinity, tak nahi ja raha, students. It is going only up to 0. If our value, computed value, 0 or 3.32 ke darmiyan lai kar jayegi, then of course we will say that it is lying in the critical region. Lekin, agar humari value 3.32 se right side pe lai karegi, then we say that it is in the acceptance region. So, in this problem, as you now see on the screen, our computed value is equal to 4.81 as we calculated a short while ago and hence we say that it does not fall in the critical region and hence we would not report to the manager that the new machine has a better performance. Students, after all, hamara jo alternative tha, wo ye keh raha tha na ke the variability has reduced. To agar hum us alternative ko accept nahi kar rahe, balke null ko accept kar rahe hai, because our value has fallen in the acceptance region, to hamari ye khahish to puri nahi hui na, kyunke hamara jo data hai, wo is baat ko support nahi kar raha. All right, students, let us now proceed to the F distribution, another very important distribution in the theory of statistical inference. I will begin by the formal definition and then I will present to you some important properties of the F distribution. As you now see on the slide, the mathematical equation of the F distribution is as follows. F of X is equal to gamma nu1 plus nu2 over 2 into nu1 over nu2 whole raised to nu1 over 2 into x raised to nu1 over 2 minus 1 and this whole thing divided by gamma nu1 by 2 gamma nu2 by 2 into 1 plus nu1 x over nu2 and this whole expression raised to nu1 plus nu2 over 2 and this entire equation is valid for x lying between 0 and infinity. This distribution has two parameters nu1 and nu2 which are known as the degrees of freedom of the F distribution. Yes, another very complicated equation just to make you realize that the F distribution is different from the chi-square distribution because its mathematical equation is different and although just like the chi-square distribution is positively skewed, the F distribution is also positively skewed but they are not one and the same distribution. Aap is equation ki intricacies may na jaye. Just note one point that the equation that you just saw, it has two quantities which can be called two parameters of the F distribution. We denote them by nu1 and nu2. And students, isme jo order hai na, that is very important. Yani, agar aap keh rahe hain ke hamari F distribution hai, 
with the new 1, new 2 degrees of freedom. So, the equation will be the one that you have seen. But if you are saying that our distribution is F distribution with new 2, new 1 degrees of freedom, so that will be completely interchanged. This means that in the equation, where new 1 is written, you will write new 2 in the place. And where new 2 is written, you will write new 1. So this is a point that you must keep in mind. All right. Let me now present to you formally some basic properties of the F distribution. As you now see on the screen, the F distribution is a continuous distribution ranging from 0 to plus infinity, as is evident from its equation. Number two, the curve of the F distribution is positively skewed. But it is important to note that as the degrees of freedom nu1 and nu2 become large, the F distribution approaches the normal distribution. The third property, students, is that for nu2 greater than 2, the mean of the F distribution is nu2 divided by nu2 minus 2, and this quantity is obviously greater than 1. Similarly, for nu2 greater than 4, the variance of the F distribution is 2 times nu2 square into nu1 plus nu2 minus 2, and this whole quantity divided by nu1 into nu2 minus 2 whole square into nu2 minus 4. Obviously, the square root of this quantity will give us the standard deviation of the F distribution. The fifth property is that for nu1 and nu2 both greater than 2, the F distribution is unimodal and the mode of the distribution is at nu2 into nu1 minus 2 over nu1 into nu2 plus 2 and this quantity is always less than 1. Students, aapne abhi thori der pehle dekha that the mean is greater than 1 and the mode is less than 1. To usse pehle hum keh rahe the that the F distribution is positively skewed. To kya positively skewed mein aisa hi nahi hona chahi? Obviously, if it is positively skewed, the mode will be to the left and the mean will be to a slightly towards the right. So, ye jo abhi properties padhi, uh, they are uh, according to what we would expect. All right. What is the next property? As you now see on the screen, if X has an F distribution with nu1 and nu2 degrees of freedom, then the reciprocal 1 over X has an F distribution with nu2 and nu1 degrees of freedom. Ye aap kahenge ke pata kya baat ho rahi this is a very interesting property, students, and it is also very useful in certain ways. Hum ye keh rahe hain ke humara jo original variable x hai, that is following the F distribution with nu1, comma, nu2 degrees of freedom. Ab agar hum transformation kare, aur hum ye nea variable introduce kare, jaysi hum kehte hain ke let y be equal to 1 over x, to ye nea variable jo hai, y keh li jay, 1 over x, this new variable ki jo distribution hai na, that is also an F distribution, but it is that one which has nu2, comma, nu1 degrees of freedom. Jo mene pehle baat kahi thi, ke nu1, nu2 farak hai, aur nu2, nu1 mukhtalif hai. For example, if uh, nu1 is equal to 7 and nu2 is equal to 9, yani hum ye keh rahe hai ke humara jo original X variable hai, that is following the F distribution, with 7,9 degrees of freedom. So, now this new variable hai, 1 over x, that will follow the f distribution, but the another f distribution, that one, which has 9,7 degrees of freedom. All right, having discussed the basic properties of the f distribution, I think I should now share with you the table of areas for the f distribution. Students, 
इस केस में इट इज अटली मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड सिचुएशन नॉट रियली बट इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग देखें अब तो दो पैरामीटर है ना न्यू वन एंड न्यू टू इसलिए इन द टेबल इन द टॉप रो वी विल बी राइटिंग द वेरियस वैल्यूज ऑफ न्यू वन एंड इन द फर्स्ट कॉलम वी विल बी राइटिंग द वेरियस वैल्यूज ऑफ न्यू टू तो फिर एल्फा यानी वो एरिया जो हमें देखना है उसके लिए तो कोई जगह नहीं बची तो हम क्या हम क्या करते हैं वी हैव डिफरेंट टेबल्स सेपरेट टेबल्स फॉर वन परसेंट एरिया ऑन द राइट टेल एंड फॉर टू एंड हाफ परसेंट एरिया ऑन द राइट टेल एंड फॉर फाइव परसेंट एरिया ऑन द राइट टेल सो एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द टेबल which is pertaining to 5% area on the right tail is as you see in the top row the values of new one are 1 2 3 4 5 6 8 12 24 and infinity and in the first column we have various values of new 2 in a similar manner and if you look at the very first cell we have the number 161.4 and students this is that value on the x axis under the f distribution to the right of which the area is 5% and which distribution are we talking about that f distribution which has 1,1 degrees of freedom similarly if you look at the fourth entry in the row corresponding to new 2 equal to 1 you find that the number is 224.6 and this is that value of x under the f distribution having 4,1 degrees of freedom to the right of which the area under the f curve is 5% in a very similar way we have the table for 2.5% area on the right tail and also a table with 1% area on the right tail all right having discussed the basic definition the basic properties and also the table of the f distribution students i think it's about time that we begin the discussion of the role of this particular distribution in statistical inference as i mentioned earlier this distribution enables us to talk about two population variances and the condition is that the two populations whose variances we are wanting to compare the two populations should be normally distributed as you now see on the slide let two independent random samples of size n1 and n2 be taken from two normal populations with variances sigma1 square and sigma2 square and let small s1 square and small s2 square be the unbiased estimators of sigma1 square and sigma2 square respectively then it can be mathematically proved that the quantity s1 square over sigma1 square divided by s2 square over sigma2 square has an f distribution with n1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1 degrees of freedom students aaiye is point ko understand karne ki koshish karte hain dekhiye aapke paas do normal populations hain for example the heights of the men and the heights of the women in a particular country um heights to normally distributed hoti hai na aur ab hum interested is cheez mein nahi hai ki mean height mein fark hai ki nahi wo to hame malum hi hai ki definitely there is a difference hum interested hain ki wo jo variability hai na in the height of the men aur jo variability hai in the height of the women उस वेरिबिलिटी में उसका जो अमाउंट है द अमाउंट ऑफ वेरिबिलिटी उसमें कोई फर्क है कि नहीं सो इट्स क्वाइट एन इंटरेस्टिंग प्रॉब्लम इज इंटेड तो अब हम क्या करें 
एक हमने सैंपल ड्रॉ कर लिया फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट पॉपुलेशन ऑफ साइज एंड वन एक हमने ड्रॉ कर लिया फ्रॉम द अदर पॉपुलेशन ऑफ साइज एंड टू और अब सैंपल आ गए तो जाहिर है कि हम एस वन स्क्वायर उसका सैंपल वेरिएंस अनबायस्ड वाला जो है वो कंप्यूट कर सकते हैं इधर से जो खातन वाली पॉपुलेशन में से हमने सैंपल ड्रॉ किया उसमें से भी हम जाहिर है कि एस टू स्क्वायर उसका जो वेरिएंस है वो कंप्यूट कर लेंगे अच्छा अब थोड़ी देर के लिए आप ये अस्यूम कर लीजिए कि जो पहली पॉपुलेशन है उसका पॉपुलेशन वेरियंस हमें नोन है और दूसरी का भी नोन है यानी सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर एंड सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर आर नोन जस्ट फॉर अ शॉर्ट वाइल आप ये स्यूम कर लें अच्छा फिर स्टूडेंट्स नाउ वी हैव फोर क्वांटिटीज एस वन स्क्वायर सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर एस टू स्क्वायर एंड सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर देन ऑफ कोर्स आई कैन कंप्यूट दिस क्वांटिटी दैट यू जस्ट शॉर्ट वाइल अगो सो ऑन द स्क्रीन एज यू सी वंस अगेन एस वन स्क्वायर ओवर सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर This whole thing divided by s2 square over sigma 2 square. ये quantity आपने compute कर ली for for these two samples that you had drawn, one from the first population, one from the other. मैं ये बात कहना चाहती हूँ कि आप फिर से आप पहले की तरह ये तस्वीर कीजिए that it is not just one sample that you are drawing from here and one from here. Think of all possible samples that you could have drawn from the first population of size n1. and all possible samples that you could have drawn of size n2 from the second population iska matlab ye hua ke crore ha samples idhar se aa gaye crore ha samples idhar se aa gaye iska matlab ye hua students ki ye jo quantity hai is is tarah ki bhi to crore ha quantities aa jayengi na because you can combine every possible s1 square with every possible s2 square और हम जो कह रहे हैं वो ये है दैट इट हैज बीन मैथमेटिकली प्रूव दैट दिस क्वांटिटी एस वन स्क्वायर ओवर सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय एस टू स्क्वायर ओवर सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर ये जो करोड़ हा की तादाद में हमने कंप्यूट कर ली इफ वी ड्रॉ द हिस्टोग्राम इट विल बी द एफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हैविंग एन वन माइनस वन कॉमा एन टू माइनस वन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम वंस अगेन I would like to say, as I said in the earlier lecture, के ये जो तरीका है बात समझाने का this is the non-mathematical way of doing it. But my point is that you should have some basic idea in your mind about what's going on. All right. Now that we are clear about this, अब तो हमारा मसला हल हो गया. We have uh, this knowledge that this particular statistic. फॉलोज दी एफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि सैम्पलिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आफ्टर ऑल सैम्पलिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन क्या थी द प्रॉबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ आवर स्टेटिस्टिक तो हम गोया यही कह रहे हैं ना कि द सैम्पलिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेटिस्टिक इज दी एफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हैविंग एन वन माइनस वन कॉमा एन टू माइनस वन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम तो फिर तो मसला जैसे मैंने कहा हल हो गया आप उसी सैम्पलिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के ऊपर कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल भी कंस्ट्रक्ट कर सकते हैं स्टूडेंट्स एंड यू कैन आल्सो कंस्ट्रक्ट द एक्सेप्टेंस रीजन एंड द क्रिटिकल रीजन इफ यू आर वांटिंग टू डू हिपोथेसिस टेस्टिंग ऑल राइट लेट अस बिगिन विद इंटरवल एस्टिमेशन एंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल फॉर द वेरियंस रेशियो Sigma one square over sigma two square is given by s one square over s two square multiplied by one over f alpha by two n one minus one comma n two minus one degrees of freedom. This is the lower limit, and the upper limit is given by s one square over s two square multiplied by f alpha by two. n2 minus 1 comma n1 minus 1 degrees of freedom all right students ye jo formula aapne abhi dekha is hawale se do baatein aap note kare pehli baat ye ke it is the ratio of the two population variances that we are talking about jab ke isse pehle aapko yaad hoga ke jab hum means ki baat kar rahe the 
تو اس وقت میں نے میو ون اوور میو ٹو کے لیے کانفیڈنس انٹرول کنسٹرکٹ نہیں کیا تھا اسی طرح جب ہم پروپورشنز کی بات کر رہے تھے وی ڈڈ ناٹ ٹاک اباؤٹ پی ون اوور پی ٹو ان دونوں صورتوں میں آپ کو یاد ہے نا دیٹ وی کنسٹرکٹیڈ دا کانفیڈنس انٹرول فور میو ون مائنس میو ٹو اینڈ پی ون مائنس پی ٹو اب اس وقت ہمیں ریشو میں کیوں انٹرسٹ ہو گیا اسٹوڈنٹس اس کی وجہ وہ انڈر لائنگ میتھمیٹکس ہے جس کی بیسس پہ ابھی تھوڑی دیر پہلے میں نے کہا دیٹ ایس ون اسکوائر اوور سگما ون اسکوائر اوور ایس ٹو اسکوائر اوور سگما ٹو اسکوائر فالوز دی ایف ڈسٹریبیوشن چونکہ ہم اس کورس میں میتھمیٹیکل ڈیریویشنس میں نہیں جانا چاہ رہے لہذا یو کین جسٹ سی دا پیٹرن آف دی اسٹیٹسٹک دی ایف اسٹیٹسٹک اس کے اندر وہ اوور بہت زیادہ ہے اور اس کی جو میتھمیٹکس ہے دیٹ ٹیلز اس دیٹ اٹ ول بی دا کانفرنس انٹرول فار سگما ون اسکوائر اوور سگما ٹو اسکوائر اینڈ ناٹ سگما ون اسکوائر مائنس سگما ٹو اسکوائر دیٹ وی کین کنسٹرکٹ آن دا بیسز آف دی ایف ڈسٹریبیوشن دی سیکنڈ پوائنٹ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ از دیٹ ان دا فارمولا دیٹ آئی جسٹ پرزینٹیڈ آپ نے دیکھا کہ ایف الفا بائی ٹو این ون مائنس ون کاما این ٹو مائنس ون لکھا ہوا تھا لوور لمٹ کے اندر ان دا ڈینومینیٹر اور ایف الفا بائی ٹو این ٹو مائنس ون کاما این ون مائنس ون لکھا ہوا تھا فار دی اپر لمٹ ان دا نیومریٹر تو اب آپ شاید کنفیوز ہو رہے ہوں کہ یہ کیا چیز ہے بٹ آبویسلی دیر از نو ریزن ٹو بی گیٹ کنفیوز وہی بات ہے نا کہ جو سبسکرپٹ ہے ایف کے ساتھ الفا بائی ٹو دیٹ از دی اماؤنٹ آف ایریا دیٹ وی وانٹ ٹو دا رائٹ آف دی ایف ویلیو دیٹ وی وانٹ ٹو کمپیوٹ لیٹ می ایکسپلین دس پوائنٹ ود دی ہیلپ آف این ایگزامپل اے رینڈم سیمپل آف ٹویلو سالٹ واٹر فش واز ٹیکن اینڈ دا گرتھ آف دا فش واز میجرڈ The standard deviation, small s1, came out to be 2.3 inches. Similarly, another random sample of 10 freshwater fish was taken and their girth was measured and the standard deviation, small s2, came out to be 1.5 inches. Find a 90% confidence interval for the ratio between the two population variances, sigma 1 square over sigma 2 square. And in doing so, assume that the populations of girth are normal. In order to solve this question, of course, we will resort to the formula that is mathematically proved and that was presented a short while ago. The formula is lower limit s1 square over s2 square into 1 over f 0.05 n1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1 and the upper limit is s1 square over s2 square into f 0.05 n2 minus 1 comma n1 minus 1 students aap note kare ki maine alpha by 2 ki jagah pe 0.05 kaha aur aisa kyu hai isliye کہ وی وانٹ نائنٹی پرسینٹ کانفیڈنس تو جو ڈیریویشن ہم نے پہلے کی تھی وین وی وی ٹرائی ٹو کنسٹرکٹ دا کانفرنس انٹرول فار میو اس میں آپ کو یاد ہے نا کہ بنیادی بات یہی تھی کہ اگر نائنٹی پرسینٹ کانفیڈنس چاہیے تو درمیان میں آپ نائنٹی پرسینٹ ایریا رکھیں گے اینڈ آن دا رائٹ ٹیل یو ول ہیو فائیو پرسینٹ اینڈ آن دا لیفٹ ٹیل آلسو یو ول ہیو فائیو پرسینٹ اس وجہ سے اس پرابلم میں الفا بائی ٹو ول بی ایکول ٹو 5%. Ab baqi jo hai, that is fairly simple. As you now see on the slide, we have S1 square is equal to 2.3 square and that is 5.29. Similarly, S2 square is 1.5 square and that is 2.25. N1 minus 1 is 12 minus 1 and that is 11. And N2 minus 1 is 10 minus 1. And that is 9. Now, in order to find the value of f 0.05, 11, 9, we will need to consult the f distribution 
that one which has been constructed for 5% area in the right tail and consulting that distribution we find that F 0 0.05 11,9 is equal to 3.1. Similarly, we also need to find F 0 0.05 9,11 and looking at the same table we find that this value is equal to 2.1. एक यहाँ पे बात बड़ी इम्पोर्टेंट है। अभी जो टेबल मैंने प्रेजेंट की थी, that is the abridged version of the larger table, और उसमें आपने शायद नोट किया हो, that in the top row we had one, two, three, four, five, six, लेकिन बाद में तमाम वैल्यूज नहीं थीं, कुछ वैल्यूज की स्पेसिंग के बाद we have some values, तो ऐसी सूरत में you will be interpolating, as you now see on the slide. In the top row, after the number 8, we have the number 12 in this abridged table. But in the first column, we do have numbers going continuously uh, in the beginning of the table. So that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. So now, if we want to see 11,9, तो इसका मतलब है कि टॉप रो से 11 के नीचे जा आना चाहिए और फर्स्ट कॉलम में 9 के अगेंस्ट हमें जाना चाहिए। नाउ अगर हम 9 के अगेंस्ट देखें तो 8 के अंदर द वैल्यू इज 3.23 जबकि 12 के अंदर द वैल्यू इज 3.07 इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि 11 के अंदर जो वैल्यू होगी अगेंस्ट 9 दैट विल बी समवेयर बिटवीन 3.23 एंड 3.07 अगर हमें 11 की बजाय 10 के अंदर देखना होता तब तो हम सिंपल एवरेज ले सकते थे इन दोनों नंबरों का जो 12 और 8 के अंदर हैं, so that we would have got 3.07 plus 3.23 over 2, and that would have been equal to 3.15. लेकिन अगर हमें 11 के अंदर चाहिए, तो इसका मतलब है कि 11 तो 10 और 12 के दरमियान लाइक कर रहा है, तो हम चाहें तो 3.07 और 3.15 का अरिथमेटिक मीन ले सकते हैं, and that will give us the value against 11. So if we do that, 3.07 plus 3.15 divided by 2 will give us 3.11. Students, this is the way we interpolate between two values. आप ये assume करते हैं के उस रेंज में जो मिसिंग वैल्यूज हैं वो इक्वी स्पेस्ड हैं और इस तरह से हम एवरेज लेके हम कर सकते हैं मैंने आसान तरीके से करने की कोशिश की कि पहले आप 8 और 12 के मिडल में आ जाइए 10 10 के अगेंस्ट वैल्यू मिल गई और फिर आप 10 और 12 के मिडल में आ जाइए तो आपको 11 के अगेंस्ट वैल्यू मिलती है तो जैसा आपने देखा इस तरह करने से हमारी वैल्यू आ रही है 3.11. लेकिन जो वैल्यू मैंने अभी थोड़ी देर पहले प्रेजेंट की थी, वो क्या थी? As you see on the slide, I said that by consulting the F table, we obtain F is equal to 3.1. तो आपने नोट किया स्टूडेंट्स कि मैंने पहले जो प्रेजेंट की थी वैल्यू, that was correct to one decimal. अगर आप इंटरपोलेशन वाली वैल्यू को देखें, 3.11 तो अगर आप उसको भी राउंड कर लें करेक्ट टू वन डेसिमल यू गेट 3.1 इसका मतलब यह हुआ कि अगर आप बहुत ज्यादा रिगरस इंटरपोलेशन वाले मेथड में नहीं भी जाना चाहते तो आप अंदाजा लगा सकते हैं कि व्हाट वुड बी योर एफ वैल्यू करेक्ट टू वन डेसिमल जो 12 के अंदर थी 3.07 इवन दैट इज इक्वल टू 3.1 और चूंकि 11 12 के बहुत नजदीक है इसलिए हम कह सकते हैं कि 3.1 ही होगी 
uh, for 11 um, because it is close to 12 and correct to one decimal, it is correct. Substituting these values in the formula of the confidence interval, we obtain 5.29 over 2.25 into 1 over 3.1 as the lower limit and 5.29 over 2.25 into 2.9 as the upper limit of our 90% confidence interval and solving these quantities, the interval is 0 0.76 to 6.81. Students, um, ye jo answer, ye jo result hume mila, is silsile mein aap do baate note karein. Pehli baat ye hai ke this one is the interval for sigma 1 square over sigma 2 square, yani the variance ratio. Agar hum interested ho, sigma 1 over sigma 2 ke liye interval construct karne mein, yani an interval for the ratio of the standard deviations of the two populations, to hum, hume kya karna chahi? Zahir hai ke we will be taking the square root of the lower limit as well as the upper limit. And if we do that, then as you now see on the slide, we obtain the 90% confidence interval for sigma 1 over sigma 2 as 0 0.87 to 2.61. Ye to hui pehli baat, ki agar aap um, standard deviations ke ratios mein interested hain, to aap square root le sakte hain. Dusri jo baat hai, that is more important and interesting in a way. Dekhye, ye jo abhi humne variance ratio ke liye confidence interval construct kiya, uski lower limit i 0.76, upper limit 6.81. Zara ghor ki jhe ke 0.76 ka kya matlab hai? Iska matlab yehi hai na that sigma 1 square is less than sigma 2 square. Isi liye to ye ratio 1 se less aya hai. Ye thi lower limit. Upper limit ke mutabik the uh, variance of the first population sigma 1 square is 6.81 times the variance of the second population. Is late unka ratio jo aya hai, that is 6.81. To students, ye kuch confusing nahi hai. Ke aapka jo confidence interval hai, agar aap uski lower limit ki taraf chale jaye, to aap uh, ye interpretation uh, aapko mil rahi hai, ke um, sigma 1 square is less than sigma 2 square. Aur agar aap upper limit ki taraf chale jaye, so, sigma 1 square seems to be much, much greater than sigma 2 square. Yes, this is a kind of a problem. Um, of course, if you lower the level of confidence so that it is not 90%, maybe if you bring it down to 80% or maybe even less, then it will narrow. Maybe you remember the discussion that the higher the level of confidence, the wider your interval. But in this time, I am opposite of the opposite. If we uh, lower the level of confidence, then it will be narrow down. Ho jayega na? It will become narrower. So then it can happen that in that case, mein lower limit might come out to be 1 point something and upper limit might come out to be 5 point something. So this is the benefit of it, that you can see the lower limit, you can see the upper limit, ko your number is greater than 1, implying that sigma 1 square is greater than sigma 2 square. Shayad aap kehre honge ki kuch bohat zyada complicate hota ja raha hai. Students, mera maqsad ye hai ki aap is baat ko realize kare that as I said once earlier, mukhtalif mathematical formulae develop kiye gaye hai with a lot of um, uh, logic, rationale and uh, very useful formulae. Lekin, har method or har formula ki um, koi na koi limitation bhi to ho sakti hai na. So, is tarah ki thodi si problem kisi kisi vakt a jati hai. Uh, yani interpret karne mein shayad aapko thodi si dikkat ho jai. But believe me, the more you practice and the more experience you have with um, this kind of work, um, it will be become quite easy for you after some time. Alright, now that we have um, discussed the confidence interval for sigma 1 square over sigma 2 
square, which enables us to compare the variability of one normally distributed population with that of another students. Let us proceed to hypothesis testing regarding the population variances. And I would like to explain this to you with the help of the example that you now see on the screen. In two series of holes to determine the number of plankton organisms inhabiting the waters of a lake, the following results were found. Series 1, 80, 96, 102, 77, and so on. And series 2, 74, 122, 92, 81, and so on. In series 1, the holes were made in succession at the same place. In series 2, they were made in different parts scattered over the lake. Does there appear to be a greater variability between different places than between different times at the same place? In order to solve this problem, the first thing to note is that if x denotes the number of plankton organisms per hole, then for each of the two series, x can be assumed to be normally distributed. Now, the hypothesis testing procedure is exactly the same as before. H0, sigma 1 square is greater than or equal to sigma 2 square. And H alternative, sigma 1 square is less than sigma 2 square. But students, please note that H0 can also be written as sigma 2 square is less than or equal to sigma 1 square. And H alternative, that sigma 2 square is greater than sigma 1 square. Jo hamara question tha, wo kya tha? Is there greater variability between different places as compared with different time periods at the same place? So, ab jis tarah se state kiya, shayad ye zyada compatible hai with the statement. Series 1 jo hai, that is for the same place, different times. Lekin series 2 jo hai, that is for different places. Aur hum yehi jana cha rahe hai na, ke series 2 ka jo variance, yani population variance hoga, sigma 2 square, is that greater than sigma 1 square? Ab ye note kijiye ke ye wali baat humne, alternative hypothesis mein place ki hui hai, null mein nahi. Kyun? Is liye ke is statement mein equal sign occur nahi kar raha. And we always have to put that one in the null which carries the equal sign. Is liye, jo hum janna cha rahe hain, jo hum test karna cha rahe hain, wo actually is, is problem mein alternative mein hai. Or jo equal sign wala uska complement hai, that is placed in the null. What is the next step? Of course, the level of significance. And as you now see on the slide, we may set it at 0 0.05 as usual. But of course, if we were interested in lower risk of committing type 1 error, then we could also have set it at 0 0.01. Students, ab jo test statistic hai, us pe khas taur pe gaur kijiye. Maine kuch ter pehle aap se kaha tha that if we are drawing a sample of size n1 from the first normal population and a sample of size n2 from the second one, then the statistic s1 square over sigma1 square over s2 square over sigma2 square follows the f distribution with n1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1 degrees of freedom. Agar aap ye 1 or 2 can I not say that the statistic S2 square over sigma 2 square whole divided by S1 square over sigma 1 square follows the F distribution having N2 minus 1 comma N1 minus 1 degrees of freedom? If you accept that, students, the next point is that according to the null hypothesis, sigma 2 square is less than or equal to sigma 1 square. Or agar aap equal sign ke hisab se lehen, 
तो सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर अगर ऐसा है तो फिर हमारा स्टेटिस्टिक क्या होगा इफ सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर देन इन द स्टेटिस्टिक एस टू स्क्वायर ओवर सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर होल डिवाइडेड बाय एस वन स्क्वायर ओवर सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर विल कैंसल आउट विद सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर एंड वी आर लेफ्ट विद एस टू स्क्वायर ओवर एस वन स्क्वायर एंड स्टूडेंट्स वी कैन से दैट अंडर द नल हिपोथिस दिस स्टेटिस्टिक फॉलोज द एफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हैविंग एन टू माइनस वन कॉमा एन वन माइनस वन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम ऑफकोर्स आई शुड नॉट हैव टू रिमाइंड यू दैट वी ऑलवेज बिगेन बाई एस्यूमिंग दैट इज नॉट इज ट्रू तो अगर इज नॉट सच है और हम उनको इक्वल माने then they cancel out and we are left with s2 square over s1 square students the fourth step is the computation of my statistic and as you now see on the screen for the first data set we have 10 values 80 96 100 and 2 and so on and therefore upon taking the square of each value and adding the squares sigma x1 square comes out to be Nine three two seven six, whereas sigma x one itself is nine hundred and sixty. Similarly, for the second series, the sum of the x two column is six fifty seven, whereas the sum of x two square is six three one two nine. Now, small s one square is equal to one over n one minus one into. Sigma x1 square minus sigma x1 whole square over n1, and small s2 square is defined in a similar fashion. Hence, substituting all the relevant values, small s1 square comes out to be 124, whereas small s2 square is equal to 244.14. hence the computed value of our statistic which we can call f is equal to 1.97 students the next step is the critical region hamara alternative hypothesis kya tha sigma 2 square is greater than sigma 1 square aur kyunki isme greater than ka sign hai therefore we are going to look at the right tail area we want the entire 5% area on the right of our critical value or is waqt hum kaun si f distribution ki baat kar rahe hain the one having n2 minus 1 comma n1 minus 1 degrees of freedom now in this problem the number of observations for the second series was 7 and the number of observations for the first series was 10 therefore n2 minus 1 is equal to 7 minus 1 and n1 minus 1 is equal to 10 minus 1 and therefore students looking at the uh, area table of the f distribution the one that is for 5% area to the right of our value we obtain as you now see on the slide f 0.056,9 is equal to 3.37 the last step of course is the conclusion and since our computed value 1.97 is less than 3.37 therefore we do not reject h not our data does not provide sufficient evidence to indicate that there is greater variability in the number of plankton organisms per whole between different places than between different times at the same place students this is the method of testing sigma 1 square equal to sigma 2 square sometimes we might be conducting a two tailed test and sometimes a one tailed test as you noticed in this example now let us consider another example which is all the more interesting as you now see on the slide two methods of determining the moisture content of samples of canned corn have been proposed 
and both have been used to make determinations on proportions taken from each of 21 cans. Method 1 is easier to apply but appears to be more variable than method 2. If the variability of method 1 were not more than 25% greater than that of method 2, then we would prefer method 1. The sample results are as follows. N1 is equal to N2 is equal to 21. X1 bar is 50. X2 bar is 53. Sigma X1 minus X1 bar whole square is 720. And sigma X2 minus X2 bar whole square is equal to 340. Based on the above sample results, which method would you recommend? Students, aapne dekha ke it is quite an interesting problem. Dekhe, ab hum keh rahe hai ke jo pehla method hai wo easier hai, lekin wo variability zyada hai. Lekin agar wo variability, dousre method ki variability se 25 feesat se mazid zyada na ho, then we will prefer method 1. So, this we will mathematically kis se formulate karenge? As you now see on the slide, H0 will be that sigma 1 square is less than or equal to 1.25 times sigma 2 square, whereas H1 will be that sigma 1 square is greater than 1.25 times sigma 2 square. Now, concentrate on the number 1.25. 1.25 means 125% aur iska yahi matlab hai ke 25% zyada as compared with the, uh, the variability of method 2. Students, I would like to encourage you to work on this particular problem on your own. The second point is the test statistic. Is case mein our test statistic is not going to be S1 square over S2 square or S2 square over S1 square. As you now see on the slide, according to what I stated earlier, it can be shown that if sigma 1 square over sigma 2 square is equal to K, then F equal to S1 square over S2 square multiplied by 1 over K follows the F distribution with N1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1 degrees of freedom. Hence, in this particular example, our statistic will be f equal to s1 square over 1.25 s2 square. Students, aapne dekha ke according to the formulation of the null hypothesis, our statistic changes slightly. And once again, I would like to encourage you to work on the earlier formula that I presented and the one that I have presented now and see that the two will tally with each other. After that, carry out all the steps and conclude for yourselves what is the conclusion in this particular problem. In today's lecture, I discussed with you the F distribution and its role in statistical inference as far as the comparison of two population variances is concerned. In the next lecture, students, we will be discussing the role of the F distribution with reference to analysis of variance and experimental design. Until next time, my best wishes to you and Allah Hafiz.